the Washington story the media can't get enough of these days is Conway versus Conway. That would be presidential advisor Kelly Ann and her husband George, who take opposing views of the president. And one of the reasons it might be getting so much attention is that most of the media sides with George. She is a top presidential aide. He is a well-respected constitutional scholar. Now they are becoming a reality show. It's a house divided. One of Washington's most bizarre feuds. The escalating war of words. For some time now, one-time Trump supporter George Conway has been critical of the president. But he upped the ante this week by claiming the president has a serious mental disorder, tweeting, once someone understands narcissistic personality disorder, they understand you and why you're unfit for the esteemed office you hold. Rather than ignore the tweets, the president fired back. George Conway, often referred to as Mr. Kellyanne Conway, is very jealous of his wife's success, a stone-cold loser and husband from hell. Even acknowledging that there's no fight too small for the president, this one has received a huge amount of coverage, and not just because a prominent married couple takes opposing views of the president, but because George Conway's mental disorder theory seems to resonate with the press. Your husband has been tweeting his concerns about the president's mental fitness for office. Are those concerns that you share? Further, the press can't help but speculate how the marriage is going between two people in differing camps under the same roof. Did you get the sense that there was a point at which point Kellyanne would say, you know what, George, enough is enough. I think they basically realize they can't talk about this all the time, otherwise it will be literally the only thing they ever talk about. Well, why not? Everyone else is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very uncomfortable talking, even in this context, about what might be going on behind closed doors as part of the marriage. I'm more focused on the public part of this because I do think that George Conway has struck a nerve, and he's been tweeting this kind of stuff for years. Yes. It's not like, but this narcissistic personality disorder has struck a chord and with the media, and I feel like they're saying, yeah, this is it. This is the key to the the problem here and that's what's really driving the coverage at this point mm. I have a very cynical view of this um, <laughs> shocking you know <laughs> I mean let's go back and remember what Joe and Mika said that Kellyanne Conway told them before the election uh, that she said bleh I feel like I need to take a shower I can't wait for this campaign to get over uh, there was a book recently, one of the many Trump books that came out, in which somebody said that um, she was seen uh, sending anti-Trump emails to her friends. Uh, I think what George Conway is doing is that he is trying to um, uh, sort of ease the way back for Kellyanne Conway to get into polite society again when this is all over. No. And I hope no. it doesn't work. That's, mm -hmm. no. I wish that were true. That is not. She, well, she's I, you know what? I, I, this is conflict. Reporters love conflict, right? Anytime there's conflict, you got a story. This one to me is fun. I don't yeah. really care. Uh, I would like to be in their house at the end of the day when <laughs> yeah. they crack open a bottle of wine and get down to talking yeah. about their tweets yeah. over the course of the last 24 <laughs> hours and see what the conversation is like. Um, I, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, I think it's an interesting story. I don't blame the media for covering it. I think it makes for news. And uh, I just think that... Uh, what about the theory the, the, that the media signs with him? Uh, they probably do. Yeah. They probably do. And, and you know, uh, I, I, at the end of the day, he's got more guts than a lot of Republicans in Congress do at criticizing the president. He's a Republican. So, hey, I think it's interesting stuff. <laughs> You know, this is uh, uh, sort of reminiscent of Jim Carville and Mary Madeline, yeah, on the, on the, uh, except they, they, you know, were civilized. They, they, they were somewhat civilized with the way they did. I mean, this is over the top. This they were is, different parties. This yes. is soap opera yes. kind of stuff. Yeah. But I do think, I'll tell you, I am interested, like you say, <laughs> with what happens when uh, they're back at home, the doors are closed, and who knows, <laughs> pillow talk or whatever. Because what I ha have to wonder about, um, uh, is he repeating what she is telling him but can't say publicly yes. no. so yes. therefore what no. he is saying i no i don't know Wait emily it, no. uh, it would seem to me that um, that no. uh, there is he is one step removed from the person who was with the president several well, she hours. She says a awfully day. disparaging things about the husband. If that's it, some who would take the word of some guy? She called him some guy this week. Well, so, yeah. that's, I think that's he's defensible. legitimizing what a lot of people feel, and yeah. uh, he's doing that's it with a tweet. Yeah. Right, yeah. but that's what she says. He's striking publicly. a chord right. because she's being asked about it. 
This is the reason why people watch The Real Housewives. <laughs> it has nothing to do with, right. with lining up absolutely with what he right. says because the media uh, agrees with it. This is a Real Housewives plot, if there ever was one. And that's why it's interesting. Everybody wants to Agreed. know what they're saying at home. And we don't, you know, if you watch Real Housewives, the husband is saying a few things to the wife at home. I'm just saying. Take it like you want to. And the other part of this that I think a lot of people are interested in and just from a story perspective, having nothing to do with why the media is amplifying this, is that he has the guts to say, or the whatever, the wherewithal, to just say whatever he wants to. Husband from hell, President Trump, look in the mirror. What are you talking about? I mean, so this guy gets to say back, and he nothing can happen to him. He can't take any job from him. He can't do whatever. The most he would do is get rid of his wife, which he doesn't want to, because the wife, as far as we know, publicly supports him. So it's a very interesting, just from a drama perspective. So I'm just I'm saying that the I'm nerve that was Bravo struck. Set the model, he's been saying these things as you, <laughs> a couple years. The nerve that was struck was this. He, he, he did all this research and he read this whole thing about narcissistic personality disorder and he put that out there and everybody in the press is going, check, check. Yeah. But, I, but, I, but I don't think it was, I, I just don't think it was as simple as that because remember, he did consider for a moment going into the Justice Department with a this moment. guy. Yes, yeah. but I'm, but even He was that, supported him back then. I understand yeah. that, but that, that says to me at that point, he did not think he had narcissistic personality. Yeah. He was going to go work for him. He learned. So he's changed his mind over a period of time. But then Trump said, well, it's a good thing you didn't take that job because that Jeff Sessions is a moron. Again, <laughs> that's why I'm telling you, this is real how. Just watch Bravo if you want to see the blueprint. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>